Hey everyone, Miss Larson here with some review of atoms, ions, and isotopes. Here is a picture of an atom, and you've probably seen a model of an atom that looks like this before, but we're going to use it as a basis for some of what we're going to talk about. Anyway, let's start with the basics. What is matter? Well, you've probably heard before that matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. And what makes up matter? Well, it's atoms. And what are atoms? They're the smallest part of an element that can retain the chemical identity of that element. So think about it this way. If you have an entire container of helium, you have a bunch of helium atoms, and you could divide that container in half, and then you could divide that half in half again, and divide that half in half again, and over and over and over and over and over. And eventually you're going to have a very, very, very small portion of helium. Well, once you get down to having two helium atoms, you can split those atoms to have one helium atom. But once you just have one left, you can't split it anymore and still have helium. So atoms are the smallest part of any element that retains the chemical identity of that element. Like I said, if you had one atom of helium and you try to split that, you'll just no longer have helium. So what makes up an... an atom, well, you've got the nucleus, which is made up of protons and neutrons, and then electrons are on the outside, which you can see here in this diagram. Now, here's uh, information about those particles. Protons have a mass of one AMU, or one atomic mass unit, and a charge of positive one. Neutrons have a mass of one AMU, or atomic mass unit, and a, a neutral charge, or a charge of zero. Electrons, which are outside of that um, nucleus have a different kind of situation here. They have a mass of zero AMU. That does not mean that they literally have no mass. It just means that their mass is so incredibly tiny that it is not counted as part of the mass of an atom. The charge of an electron is, as you might know, a negative one charge. When we're looking at the basics of atoms, we would consider a couple important numbers. The mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Like I said before, electrons have a very incredibly tiny mass, and so they are not counted when determining the mass of an atom. Pretty much all of the mass of an atom is contained within its nucleus, and nuclei are very, 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 very dense. So there is a lot of uh, mass in terms of like pounds per square inch, or kilograms per square media, meter in um, contained within the nucleus. It's very dense and it's very massive compared to the rest of the atom. The atomic number is very important and we'll talk about that a lot when we talk about ions and also isotopes. And that atomic number is the number of protons. It is um, going to also not only just be the number of protons, but also give an element its identity. So if you know the number of protons, you know which element you're dealing with. Now, some people might ask, with all these charges going on and with all of those protons with a big positive charge in the nucleus, how do atoms actually stay together and not fly apart? Well, there is some force of attraction between the positive nucleus um, because of those positive protons that are within it and the negative electrons that are outside of the atom that help hold it together. And the other reason, if you think about why, why do we have all these neutrons? Well, the neutrons are kind of like the glue that holds the nucleus together. They space the protons far enough apart that those positive charges don't cause the nucleus to um, kind of repel itself and burst apart. So nu neutrons are pretty important in terms of letting the atoms stay together. Next up, we're talking about ions and calculating electrons. When you hear ions, I want you to think electrons. Now, in a neutral atom, you have the same number of protons and the same number of electrons because the charges cancel each other out, which leaves you with a neutral atom. But ions are when you have an atom that has a charge, either positive or negative. Now, in class, we've talked about cations and anions. Cations have a positive charge. They've lost electrons. Um, not elections, but electrons. I'll fix that typo. Anyway, um, one way to remember that is you could say, I'm positive I lost my cat. And I'm kind of a cat lady, so that works for me. But it means you have a positive charge. You lost an electron. It's a cation. 
For anions, they're negatively charged. That means they gained electrons. And you might remember it by thinking, my chemistry teacher always nags me. Negative charge, anion gains electrons. How do you determine how many electrons you have? Well, you can use this formula of charge equals P minus E or charge equals the number of protons minus the number of electrons. You can also think of the balance of positive and negative charges and or think about loss or gain of electrons. But I think this is an easy formula to remember. And I think that if you have any bit of that information that's missing, you can use the other two pieces to figure it out. So if you know the charge, and you know which atom it is, um, meaning you could look up the atomic number and know the number of protons, then you can figure out how many electrons you have. And um, vice versa, if you know the atom's identity or which element it is, you can figure out how many protons it has. And if you um, don't know the number of electrons, but you know the charge, you can plug in to that formula and be able to use it. So whether you know the charge or the number of electrons, you can figure out that other piece of information by knowing which atom you're working with. Um, because if you know which atom you're working with, you know how many protons it has. All right, most recently we've talked about isotopes. When you see the word isotope, I want you to think about neutrons and different numbers of neutrons. Now, isotopes are the same element because they have the same number of protons, but they have a different number of neutrons. And why does it matter? Who cares if you have more neutrons? Well, more neutrons because they have a atomic mass of one AMU means that if you have more neutrons, you have more mass in your nucleus of your atom and that could cause some changes. So um, the reason why you would have more mass in your nucleus, well, the mass number equals the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Isotope notation. Here are some examples of isotope notation. You've got carbon 12 here and carbon 14, and they are both carbon. And if you look that up on the periodic table, you can find out that carbon has an atomic number of six, which means it has six protons. But carbon 12 and carbon 14 are different from each other. Carbon 12 has six neutrons, and that means that 12 being the mass number minus six, the number of protons, leaves you six neutrons in carbon-12. In carbon-14, it's a little different because in carbon-14, you have a mass number of 14 minus six protons leaves you with eight neutrons. So the number of neutrons in these two isotopes is different and that has different impacts on the atoms themselves. Well, what does that mean? Well, carbon-12 has a stable nucleus or what we would call a stable nucleus, and carbon-14 does not have a stable nucleus. It has an unstable nucleus. You might have also heard that being called radioactive. If you've heard of radioactive decay or radiometric dating for finding out how old fossils are, you've heard of using carbon-14, and you can use that because the nucleus will decay since it is unstable due to having eight neutrons rather than six. Um, how do you figure out how many neutrons you have? Like I said, kind of said earlier, you can find out how many neutrons you have by taking the mass number and subtracting the number of protons or the atomic number. So mass number minus atomic number is the number of neutrons. Why does it matter about these isotopes? Who cares if you have more neutrons? Like I said, um, if it's an atom of the same element, it will have similar properties because it has the same number of protons. But if there are different numbers of neutrons, then the nucleus could be heavier or lighter, which could end up making it unstable. We can write these isotopes in a couple different ways. You can write it as nitrogen 14, and the 14 there refers to the mass number, or N14, N is the chemical symbol for nitrogen, and that tells you the mass number. But a more helpful way to show isotope notation is right here. And in this case, you actually show the mass number and the atomic number and the charge. So this one is not only an isotope of nitrogen, but it's also an ion of ni nitrogen because it has a charge. So why is this one so useful? Well, you can figure out how many neutrons you have by setting up a subtraction equation between mass number minus atomic number. So in this case, 14 minus 7 would mean you have 7 neutrons in this isotope of um, nitrogen. And you can also figure out how many electrons it has because 
with a negative three charge. Well, if the atomic number was seven, that means it had seven protons. And if the charge is negative three, uh, negative ions or anions have gained electrons, meaning that you went from normally in a neutral nitrogen would have seven electrons, but now since you've gained three, you have 10 electrons, giving you a negative three charge. So in this um, notation, you can figure out the number of neutrons and the number of electrons pretty easily. Thanks so much for listening.